Well, Best Buy shares we're taking a look at this morning as its second quarter results beat expectations for revenue and earnings and comparable sales coming in at a narrower loss than expected. But the outlook is the key here. The company updating its full year guidance and lowering its revenue target to between $43.8 billion and $44.5 billion, as well as expecting a further drop in comparable sales between 4.5% and 6%. But they did raise their EPS guidance for the year. Now, Brad, obviously we're coming Coming at the, the tail end of what we're seeing with some of the consumer discretionary spending companies here, this was considered sort of better than feared, but a lot of that softness that we saw in things like cell phones, appliances, home theater, mobile phones, and the CEO also noting some of the trade-off decisions that they're seeing customers making and still expecting that softness to continue as well. Yeah, there were four key things that I kind of took away from this. One, they narrowed their guidance toward the lower end of the range there, kind of, uh, you know, bringing that range closer together, but towards the bottom end. So that not good. Uh, forecasting electronic stabilization by next year as well. And that's going to be driven by replacement cycles. Uh, that was at least part of the expectation that was also discussed with regard to where they're seeing some bottoming out in the demand profile right now. And so um, from a merchandising perspective as well, one thing that did catch my attention was that the largest drivers of comparable sales declines on a weighted basis, it was appliance, it was home theater, it was computing, mobile phones. I mean, I kind of think back to uh, Jason Kelsey's uh, Eagles championship speech for the parade saying, it's the whole team. Like that, that feels like everything. Appliances, home theater, computing, mobile phones. What's left out? Cameras, I guess. But ultimately, at the end of the day, they did give me for some uh, camera products. Um, but domestic online revenue, that was interesting to hear. That decreased by about 7.1% on a comparable basis, which perhaps could give you an inkling or at least some type of thinking into how consumers want to get their hands on the product before they're making a purchase, which would further lead to the thought that they're being extremely um, scrutinous with how they are spending right now. And so that discretionary spending certainly hitting uh, the doors at Best Buy and some of those aisles as well. And so uh, what more they have to say on the call is going to be interesting to see if there's anything that kind of crosses the wires around that too, Rochelle. It's true. I mean, and there were a few bright spots. I mean, when you look at product margin rates, those improved along with the financial performance from some of the company's membership offerings. So and also we saw that domestic gross profit rate that improved 110 basis points to 23.1 percent of sales. So some bright spots, but still really not seeing much certainty from the consumer. The CEO noting the financial results better than expected, but they reflect a consumer electronics industry that remains challenged, expecting this, this to be the low point in tech demand after two years of sales decline. So still seeing these trade-offs. And as we've noticed, some of these big ticket items consumers continuing to pull back from saying, maybe I'll wait for the Labor Day sales. Maybe, I'm, maybe I've bought everything I need to buy in terms of big ticket items when I have other expenses and you know student, student debt repayments coming on deck as well. But it's just not what they're prioritizing right now. Yeah, I mean, I highly doubt if anybody is kind of going back to school right now and just waiting for a Labor Day sale to hit uh, that they're going to, you know, skip their way into a Best Buy to try and pick up a, a big screen TV. However, I did have a roommate that bucked that trend in college. We won't go into his details. But one way or another, I think for a lot of the retailers that are trying to make sure that they're discounting where appropriate, especially given the volume pullback that they are seeing, that they're not sacrifices margins, sacrificing margins tremendously. Uh, but that is unfortunately the, the case that is playing out with a lot of the larger appliance or big ticket item retailers right now. I'll just kind of end with this quote here, too, um, from Corey Berry saying, we expect it, uh, we, we continue to expect this year will be the low point in tech demand after two years of sales declines. Next year, the consumer electronics industry should see stabilization and possibly growth driven by a natural upgrade and replacement cycles and normalization, normalization of tech innovation. Um, Perhaps it's foldy phones. Maybe foldy phones will, will be all the rage. And uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm still waiting for that roll up uh, television. Uh, we saw that at CES a couple of years back. So maybe that will be the tech innovation that will make its way into some living rooms and dens and whatnot.